Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy and this is my nest. Today I want to start off by showing you the Affinity Cardigan. This is the Affinity Video Sweater Class by Patty Lyons that I did back before Christmas. Started it in November and got it done in time for Christmas. There's the sleeve, and here's the back. Here's the pockets. Nice and cozy pockets. As you can see, the sleeves are long on me. They actually are long on my husband, too. <laughs> Not sure what happened there, but they turned out really long. Anyway, nice thing about sleeves is that you can always turn up the cuff if they're too long, or you can just kind of tuck them up your arm a little bit. And it's also really long on me because my husband is tall, so he has probably six or so inches more than I do. Lots of buttons. <laughs> I'm very happy with how it turned out. Uh, I used the Deluxe Deluxe Worsted Superwash by Universal Yarn. For my husband, I always use something that is machine washable because he can't be bothered to hand wash a sweater. Just not happening. And the one time that I made him a 100% wool sweater, I gave him specific instructions. I said, do not put this in the washing machine. I will wash it for you. And he still forgot. And that was the end of that sweater. So it either has to be something like Encore, which is only 25% wool, or this, which is 100% wool, but it's super wash. I was unsure about this yarn at first. You know, because it's super wash, it doesn't feel the same as regular wool, and I wasn't crazy about knitting with it. However, however, after I got into it, I became more comfortable with it, and it was better for um, knitting with. Now he has washed it. <sighs> he washes it once a week. <laughs> I can't talk him into only washing it once a season. He washes it once a week. Every time he wears it, he washes it, which is more than a sweater needs to be washed. So it's not looking too bad, actually, but it is showing that it's getting so much washing. There's not really any pilling to speak of. It's just getting a little uh, fuzzy. But you can still see the cables pretty well. They're nice and popping. I did do a couple of modifications on this. My husband has a bit of a stooped back, so I put short rows along the upper back to accommodate that stoop. And the pockets in the original are small. So I made these pockets both wider by about I think in the original, the pockets end right on this column of stockinette here, and I extended it all the way over to the edge of the cable here. If you can see that. So the original pocket went to here, and I moved it all the way over to here. So it's approximately an inch and a half wider than in the pattern. And then I also made it taller because I felt like when I got to the height in the pattern that it called for, I felt like my hand was barely fitting in there and he has bigger hands than I do. So I went up a little bit. I forget how, how much taller I made it, but it's a very comfortable fit now. Boom, boom, and it fits my whole hand in there. Cozy. And then finally, one other alteration was the cardigan. 
the pattern has two options. It's a pullover or a cardigan. And the pullover has a high neck and the cardigan has a lower neck. So I went up to the pullover neck even though I was working the cardigan because I wanted a higher neckline here. Now because of that, the shawl collar is a little bit uh, narrower because there's not as many as much room to work all the short rows. So I added a few extra short rows. I squeezed them in where I could. It's still not as wide of a shawl collar as I would like because it has trouble staying down. And my, when my husband wears it, he usually ends up wearing it with the collar up for that reason because the, the shawl collar just doesn't want to stay down. You can make it stay down if you force it. And it's overall a little big on me. But it fits like a boyfriend sweater. Curl up in it in front of the fire if I had a fireplace. So there it is all done for you to see. If you're interested in this sweater, it's a, it's a video sweater class, and it's ongoing, so you can take it at any time. In the pattern, there are links for all the videos that go with it, and she has, you can either just do it straight, like the pattern says, or she has a whole bunch of modifications, and each modification has a different either video or a tutorial that goes with it to show you how to modify um, changing the pockets, I think, is one of them. Uh, there's also uh, um, uh, modifications for waist shaping. <clears throat> I did not do any waist shaping on this because it's for Jim. If it were for me, I definitely would have put it some waist shaping in. So I highly recommend it. And it's fun cabling. Nice to do. Okay, so while I'm working on my braid cardigan, which I still haven't finished yet, I decided to do a side trip into a Christmas present that I got this year. I had been admiring this and put it on my Christmas list because I, I wasn't 100% sure that I wanted it, but I really liked it and it sounded fun. So what it is, is the yoke o'clock. Here it is. It doesn't have any numbers on it, so I'm like, uh. So it has these uh, north, south, east, west uh, feathers, I guess you would call these, that are darker, that show the uh, 12, 9, 6, and 3 spots. And then the other ones in between are a little finer. But it has no numbers, so you could put it however you wanted it. This, however, is the correct way. I'm really happy with it. I bought, or well, I mean I got it for Christmas, but what I wanted was the entire kit. You can get just the pattern, but I got the, the whole kit because I was not sure about the mechanics of it. I don't know anything about clocks and how to put them together, and I just wanted my hand held through the whole process. And I'm glad that I did that. It was very worthwhile. The kit, actually, it just comes with, so <laughs> the uh, support behind here is a record album. Now for me, I have a whole box of record albums in the attic, but maybe a lot of people don't have any albums anymore, so the kit includes an album, and then it also includes the clock pieces. The pattern comes as a download, which I got on Ravelry. Oh no, that's not true. The download is from her website. And she walks you step by step through the entire process, both knitting the cover and then assembling the clock itself. I used 
leftover yarn for my sea change sweater, which was Distal Fink Farm Fingering. And I did a little gradation out. All of the yarn is that Distal Fink Fingering leftovers. So there's the blue, gray, light pink, and the dark pink or purpley color. Now, uh, it did have a little a couple problems with it. I started, of course, in the middle, you start from nothing basically, and you work on double points till you get to the till it's uh, wide enough to fit on a circular. And after I finished knitting it, you could see very clearly the difference between where I switched from the double points to the circular. Because this section, the gray-blue section in the center, was popping out kind of like a nipple. It was raised up. And then the, the outer portions were basically flat. So I think it's a result of my gauge problems. I had a lot of trouble getting gauge with this. I started with the recommended uh, size 2 needle. And it, it was too tight. So I went up to a three and I got the exact same gauge. It was too tight. So I went up to a four and I got the exact same gauge and it was too tight. And I'm like, what is going on with this? And I knew if I went over four, it, it just didn't feel right in my gut. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to stick with the four and see what happens. So I started with the four on the double points and then I switched to a four on the circular and I mean, it was obvious that I would, my gauge on the double points was very different from my gauge on the circular because of the way it was protruding in the center. So when I was done, I attacked it with the iron. I didn't bother wet blocking it. I just put it on the ironing board and I, I didn't even use a cloth in between. I just put the iron right on and let it steam, 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 steam. <laughs> It took a while for me to get it nice and flat, but as you can see, I finally did get it to flatten out. Hooray! <laughs> now here, I'll show you the back. This is what it looks like. Oh, another consequence of the gauge issue is that the patterning, which is supposed to end right at the edge of the record album, flowed over onto the back side and here you can see the back. So it, the patterning flows over and then there's a pearl turning ridge which is supposed to be right on the turning edge of the album but because of my gauge issues it came way over on the other side. Here you can see the center of the album and then this is the clock mechanism in the middle. The, there's no cast off on this, when you're done knitting, you leave the stitches alive and you thread your yarn through there and then you just pull it tight over the album. One modification I did make is that in reading over the past patterns that people had made, some people said the album was a little bit wobbly. And so a couple of people um, did two albums instead of just one. So since I have a whole box full in the attic, I pulled out a second album and I put them together. And it's quite firm. It, it worked really well. I'm trying to think if there was anything else I wanted to say about this. Oh yeah. In the center, of course you leave a little hole so that you can fit the clock mechanism through. And then after you're done with that, then you close up the hole in the center. Now I don't know if you can, how well you can see, but when I closed up the hole, it you pull it through and it's twisting and the whole thing is skewed. So like six o'clock does not exactly line up with 12 o'clock here. The lines are off because when I pulled the yarn tight in the, in the center, it just pulled the whole thing around. Now I think from a distance it's not too noticeable, but it's just one little thing that bugs me. 
I'm not sure how I would rectify that, how I would do it differently so it doesn't pull around. I looked at other people's online and I couldn't see that anybody else had the same problem, so it must just be me. Anyway, I'm really happy with it. I love it. I have it hanging on the wall in my living room now. It's fun. To finish up here today, I'm going to show you where I am on my braid card cardigan. It's by Josie Mercier and it's from Interweave Knits. Last time I showed you the front and I did finish the back. So that's all done. And I've just started my first sleeve. And you can see, well, in the pattern, there is no cabling at all on the sleeve. But I decided to add, as I mentioned before, a saddle coming up. Uh, this cardigan has the same thing, the affinity. It has the uh, sleeve detail coming up, and then it comes up over the shoulder and into the neck, and that's the saddle. So I've de decided to do the same thing on this, which is not in the original pattern. So I added the pattern, uh, the cable pattern that is in the middle of the back. I chose that one and put it on my sleeve. It's actually quite similar to this affinity one. The only difference is this has, it's basically ovals with one cross between them. And this one is ovals with two crosses between them. But basically the same thing. So I've added that. So there is a lot less cabling on the sleeves. So I'm hoping that they will go a little bit faster for me, that it won't bother my thumbs too much. But I will tell you, there's another reason why it's taking me so long to make this sweater. For this sweater, I am using Patton's Rustic Wool. Now I'm all about farm yarn. In fact, this was made with farm yarn, and I use it quite a bit. And this is called Patton's Rustic Wool, and it's a nice blue color, and I like that it's rustic-y. However, when I started knitting with it, I don't know how well you can see, but there are white guard hairs sticking out of the yarn all over the place, everywhere. And as I started knitting with it, it's, it bothered me. <laughs> My type A personality took over and every time I find one of those white guard hairs sticking out, I just have to remove it. I can't stand it. <laughs> so, that's another reason why it's taking me so long, because I'm picking out all the guard hairs, which is insane. <laughs> now you know what I'm really like. All right, that's all I have for you today. Let me know how you're doing. We have a snow day today, so I decided to take advantage of it and record this podcast today while I have a little bit of free time. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments field below, and let me know how you're doing. Have you finished anything recently? What are you working on? Maybe you've been working on the same thing for months on end. It happens, right? Well, that's all I have. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.